The Ugly Duckling, adapted from the classic fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. It was a lovely summer day in the country. The corn fields and the meadows were surrounded by a large forest. A pleasant old farmhouse stood near a deep river and along the river bank grew plants with huge green leaves. In this snug hideaway, a duck sat on her nest, waiting for her brood to hatch. She was getting tired, for the little ones were taking a long time coming out of their shells. Finally, the shells began to crack, and from each egg came a, came a tiny creature that lifted its head and cried, Peep, peep, how large the world is said the young ducks. Wait till you have seen the garden, said their mother. It stretches far beyond what you can see. Then she noticed that one egg had not yet hatched. I declare, she said. The largest egg lies there still. I wonder how long this is to last. I'm quite tired of it. Let me take a look, said an old duck who had stopped to visit. I have no doubt it is a turkey's egg. I was talked into hatching some turkey eggs once, and after all my care and trouble with the young ones, they were afraid of the water. I could not get them to go in. The old duck examined the egg and nodded. Yes, that is a turkey's egg, all right. Take my advice and leave it where it is. I think I will sit on it a little while longer, said the mother duck. I have sat so long already, a few more days will be nothing. Suit yourself, said the old duck, and she went away. Finally, the large egg broke and the last duckling crept forth crying, peep, peep. He was very large and ugly. The mother duck stared at him and examined. He's not at all like the others. I wonder if he really is a turkey. The next day, the mother duck took her brood onto the water and jumped in with a splash. One after another, the little ducklings jumped in. Soon they were all swimming, including the ugly duckling. Ah, said the mother to herself, that one is not a turkey. He uses his legs as well. And look how upright he holds himself. He is my own child and he is not so very ugly after all. If you look at him properly. She gathered her brood together and said, quack, quack, all of you come with me. Now I will show you the farmyard and introduce you around. Let me see how well you can behave. The ducklings did as they were told, but the greeting they got was not at all polite. What a queer looking object that big duckling is, said one of the grown up ducks. We don't want him here. Another flew out and bit the duckling. Let him alone, said the mother. He is not doing any harm. Yes, but he is so big and ugly, said the spiteful duck, and therefore he must be turned out. Even though that he is not pretty, he is kind and polite, and he swims as well or even better than the others, said the ugly duckling's mother. I think he will grow up pretty and perhaps be smaller than you imagine. It's just that he remained too long in the egg, and therefore he wasn't properly formed. But it didn't matter what she said. The poor duckling was bitten and pushed and made fun of. A turkey who had been born into the image himself as an emperor, flew at the duckling, and poor little thing did not know where to go. He was quite miserable. So it went from day to day until he got so bad that even his brothers and sisters were unkind to him. They would say, ah, you ugly creature, I wish the cat would get you. Even his mother grew discouraged. So at last the ugly duckling ran away, 
He ran until he came out on a large marshy area. After he had been there two days, feeling very lonely, two wild geese came by. They began to speak to the duckling, but suddenly there came a great popping sound. Two wild geese flew swiftly away. The whole flocks of geese rose up from their rushes. The popping sound continued from everywhere. For sportsmen surrounded the moor, smoke from their guns rose like clouds over the dark trees. And as it floated away across the water, sporting dogs bound in among the rushes. The terrified duckling tried to hide his head under his wing. And at the same moment, a large, terrible dog passed quite near him. The dog's jaws were open and his eyes glared fearfully. He thrust his nose close to the duckling, showing his sharp teeth. And then off he went into the water without touching the duckling at all. Oh, said the duckling with a sigh, for once I am thankful for being so ugly. Even a dog will not bite me. It was late in the day before all became quiet, but even then the poor young thing did not dare to move for hours. Finally, after looking carefully around him, he hurried in the meadow into the meadow until a storm arose and he could hardly struggle against it. Towards everything, he reached a small battered cottage. He quietly slipped in and got shelter for the night. A woman, a tomcat, and a hen lived in the cottage. The tomcat could raise his back and purr and could even throw out sparks from his fur if he were to stroke it the wrong way. Then, he laid, he, then the hen laid good eggs and her mistress loved her as if he had been her own child. In the morning, the strange visitor was soon discovered, but the old woman's sight was poor and when she saw the duckling, she thought it must be a fat duck, for he had already grown quite a bit. Oh, what a prize, she exclaimed. I hope it's not a drake, for if it is, it's a female duck instead. I shall have some duck eggs. I must wait and see. So the duckling was allowed to remain for a while, but of course, there was no eggs. As the days passed, the duckling would sit quietly in a corner, feeling unwanted. Not only was he ugly, but he could not purr like the cat, and he could not give eggs like the hen. He was not treated unkindly, but no one cared to hear anything he had to say. After a while, he began to long for a swim on the water. He rarely spoke, but when he could, not help telling the hen how he felt. What an absurd idea, said the hen because you have nothing else to do, you have foolish ideas. If you could purr or lay eggs, your silly notions would go away. But it's so delightful to swim about on the water, said the duckling, and so refreshing to dive down to the bottom. Why, you must be crazy, said the hen. Ask the cat. He is the cleverest animal I know. Ask him how he would like to swim about on the water or dive under it. Or ask the old woman. There's no one in the world more clever than she is. Do you think she would like to swim or let the water close close over her head? You don't understand me, said the duckling. Who can understand you, I wonder, said the hen. Just thank your good fortune that you have been given a place to stay here. I advise you to lay eggs or learn to purr as quickly as possible. I believe I must go out into the world again, said the duckling. Yes, do, said the hen. So the duckling left and soon found water on which he could swim and dive. But his life was no different. The duckling was avoided by all other animals. Autumn came and the leaves in the forest turned to orange and gold. Then winter approached and the clouds heavy with snow hung low in the sky. All this was very sad for the poor little duckling. One evening, just as the sun set, a large flock of beautiful birds suddenly appeared of the bushes. 
The duckling had never seen anything like them before. They were swans with graceful necks and soft feathers of dazzling white. They spread their glorious wings and flew high into the air. The ugly little duckling watched excitingly. He didn't know the names of the birds, but he knew he would never forget them. The winter grew colder and colder. To keep the water from freezing, the duckling had to swim around in it almost all the time. Even so, ice continued to form. And every night, the space on which it formed grew smaller and smaller. Finally, he grew so tired one night that he couldn't continue. He rested, lying still and helpless, and became frozen fast in the ice. Early in the morning, a peasant passing by saw what had happened. He broke the ice with his wooden shoe and carried the duckling home to his wife. The warmth revived the poor little creature, but when the children wanted to play with him, the duckling grew frightened. He fluttered into the milk pan and splashed milk all over the room. The peasant's wife became clapping her hands, which frightened the duckling even more. He flew into a butter cask and then into a tub filled with grain and finally out again. The peasant's wife ran at him with a stick. The children laughed and tumbled over each other to catch him. Luckily, the door stood slightly open and the duckling managed to slip out. The poor little duckling endured terrible miseries during the hard winter, and when it had finally passed, he found himself lying one morning in a moor among the rushes. He felt the warm sun shining and heard a lark singing. Spring had arrived. The young duck tested his wings by flapping them against his sides. Soon he was flying. He rose high into the air. His wings brought him a great distance. After a while, he stopped in a large garden, an apple tree. They were in full blossom and fragrant honeysuckle trees bent their long green branches down to a stream. Everything looked beautiful. The ugly duckling thought he was alone. Then he had heard a sound from a thicket. When he turned to look and saw three beautiful white swans, they were rustling their feathers and swimming lightly over the smooth water more than anything, the duckling wanted to join them. I will fly to those royal birds, he exclaimed, and they will probably lash out at me because I am so ugly, but it does not matter. Better to be hurt by them than pecked by ducks, beaten by the hens, pushed out by the maiden who feeds the poultry, or starved with hunger in the winter. He flew to the water and swam towards the swans. The moment they saw the stranger, they rushed to him and outstretched their wings. Do what you must to me, cried the poor duck, and he bent his head to the surface of the water. But then he looked down to the clear stream, as if into a mirror, and what he saw astonished him. Looking back was his own image. And it was not that of an ugly, dark, gray duck. He had grown into a graceful and beautiful swan. The great swan swam around the newcomer. They stroked his neck with their beaks as a welcome. Before long, some little children came into the garden to feed bread to the swans. Look, cried the youngest, there is a new one. The children threw bread into the water. The new one is the most beautiful of all, they said. At first, the swan felt confused. He hid his head under his wing. Up until now, he had been laughed at, beaten for his ugliness. Now you hear them say he was the most beautiful of all the birds. Then he rustled his feathers, curved his slender neck, and cried joyfully from the depths of his heart. I never dreamed of such happiness as this while I was an ugly duckling. <laughs>